Time travel, a staple of science fiction literature and cinema, has been explored in countless creative ways. The concept revolves around the possibility of moving backward or forward in time, defying the linear progression of events that we experience in our everyday lives. Time slips, on the other hand, are mysterious and often unexplained phenomena where individuals report brief and unexpected experiences of being transported to a different time or era. In today's episode, let us delve deep into some real and unknown time travel, or time slips incidents. On a chilly and misty evening in December 2014, John Villon and his spouse were out and about, relishing their break and the extra funds from a bonus payment. With cash in hand, they made an impromptu decision to embark on a spontaneous road trip, aiming to explore various intriguing supernatural spots across the state of Texas. After procuring an atlas from a nearby gas station, they meticulously charted their journey, drawing inspiration from a circular route suggested by John's wife as they perused the map. Following this distinctive path, they made their way to the reputed site of the San Antonio children of the railroad tracks. Their adventurous spirit also led them to Marfa, Texas, where they sought to witness the enigmatic Marfa lights. Among other captivating destinations, five days into their expedition, John began to feel fatigued from the extended hours at the wheel. He decided to steer homeward as dusk approached, evading the afternoon rush. As nightfall gradually descended, with nearly three hours of driving still ahead and their stomachs growling, John turned to his wife, asking her to scout for a place to dine as midnight approached. Through the cold fog that enveloped them, they stumbled upon a radiant neon sign announcing the presence of an all-night diner, offering a delectable array of affordable dishes. John exclaimed, absolutely perfect, just what we've been searching for. Yet, his wife harbored a slight sense of unease. The sight of an all-night diner in such an isolated location struck her as unusual and disconcerting. Nevertheless, John's overpowering hunger compelled him to dismiss her reservations, and with curiosity piqued, they ventured inside. Within the establishment, they savored a hearty meal that left them utterly satisfied. The waitress extended exceptional kindness, and their appetites led them to indulge until they could eat no more. Notably, John observed that the eatery exuded a charmingly vintage ambience, reminiscent of a bygone era, perhaps drawing inspiration from the 1970s. The furnishings, from the chairs to the tables, felt like cherished relics from yesteryears, setting it apart from the contemporary dining establishments they were accustomed to frequenting. Adding to the intrigue, they found themselves to be the sole patrons in this nostalgic enclave. As the moment arrived to settle their bill, John approached a time-worn cash register, its antiquity giving it an air of deliberate vintage preservation. It intrigued him, leading to contemplation about how the owners had managed to acquire such a well-preserved relic. Another curious aspect was the waitress herself, she lacked the modern convenience of a cell phone and instead, seamlessly blended with the retro ambience, sporting a classic 1970s hairstyle, when it came time to conclude their visit, John retrieved two $20 bills from his wallet, presuming their meal might have carried a more substantial price tag. Nevertheless, he was taken aback when the total on the bill amounted to just shy of $10. Seeking confirmation from the cashier to ensure the accuracy of the tally, he received assurance that the amount was indeed correct, given their consumption. With a generous spirit, he handed over a $20 bill and insisted the waitress keep the change as a token of their appreciation. Grateful for this gesture, she warmly encouraged them to return whenever their travels brought them back to the area. Continuing their journey, both were filled with a profound sense of contentment stemming from the outstanding service they had received. They eagerly discussed plans to return soon, particularly because it was a conveniently short two-hour drive from their residence. A fortnight following their unique dining experience, John and his spouse were compelled to revisit the vintage diner, this time in the daylight. However, their efforts left them utterly perplexed. 
No matter how many times they traversed the familiar route, the diner remained elusive. Instead, they stumbled upon the remnants of a deteriorated structure, its roof long gone, windows absent, and decaying walls enveloped by overgrown grass. John furrowed his brow, entertaining the notion that they might have inadvertently ventured into the wrong town. Nevertheless, they were undeniably in the correct location, with only the dilapidated remains of the building to greet them. Confounded, John approached a local resident, seeking information about the diner's whereabouts. The local's response was one of sheer amazement, how did you even know there was a diner here, John, in turn, grew increasingly bewildered, retorting, what do you mean? We dined there just a few weeks ago. The local then shared a disturbing revelation, the diner had been consumed by a fire over four decades ago, claiming the lives of all who worked there. Skepticism filled John as he fervently recounted their recent experience, undeterred, the local retrieved his cell phone, displaying a news article chronicling the tragic inferno, complete with photographs of the ill-fated workers. Among the images was the kind waitress who had served them that fateful night. Overwhelmed and alarmed, John and his spouse expressed their gratitude for the information, promptly departed the area, and accelerated away. During their journey, they grappled with the bewildering encounter. Had they unintentionally traversed a rift in time, momentarily transported to an era when the diner thrived? Or had they dined amidst the spectral remnants of a tragic bygone era, John frequently revisited his recollections of the encounter, searching for an explanation. While he struggled to recollect the precise name of the town, he recalled its location lying somewhere between Lula and Sarda. Jack Spread had always nurtured a profound affection for the great outdoors. Hailing from the magnificent Pacific Northwest, specifically the pristine western Washington Cascades, he counted himself fortunate to have spent his early years immersed in the natural world, often accompanied by his father. Together, they traversed the mountains, engaged in hunting and fishing, and explored the Cascades' hidden treasures, which Jack grew to know as intimately as his own reflection. One cherished locale that held a special place in Jack's heart was Goblin Creek, situated along the Index Galama Road, just off Highway 2. In Jack's childhood, this place became a frequent destination for his family. Their excursions typically involved angling, marksmanship, and the quest for a unique variety of rock. These resilient stones, when expertly cut and polished, unveiled breathtaking images reminiscent of the scenic vistas one might encounter within a hidden cave. Jack couldn't quite recall the official name for these stones, to him, they were simply known as, picture rocks. An art gallery and mineral emporium owned by a close friend and neighbor of Jack's father eagerly purchased these picture rocks, offering a handsome price of $2 per pound. This venture proved to be a lucrative source of income for a young boy. Moving these stones from the creek to the nearby dirt road didn't involve an exceptionally lengthy journey. However, it did possess the potential to lead someone astray if they lacked familiarity with the route. Despite Jack's frequent visits to this particular creek, he had crossed paths with only two other individuals on those occasions. The first encounter had been with a game warden who had been drawn by the sounds of their target practice, merely checking in to ensure everything was in order. However, the other encounter from Jack's past continues to baffle him to this day. At the age of 14, Jack vividly recalls one of these journeys. He was loaded up with a backpack filled with these unique rocks, making his way back to his father's truck when he stumbled upon a man who appeared to be in his early thirties. Both of them were taken aback by this unexpected meeting since it was a rarity to encounter anyone in such an isolated part of the mountains. However, as they drew closer, the man's initial surprise transformed into sheer astonishment. He started to look as though he had seen a ghost, remaining silent as Jack passed by. The stranger's gaze remained fixed on Jack, as if he were searching for the right words to ask a question. Once Jack had moved beyond the stranger, he couldn't help but be struck by how much the man resembled someone who could belong to his own family. 
The resemblance was truly uncanny. Jack continued on his path to the truck, unloaded the rocks, and then made his way back to the river where his father was. Upon reaching his dad, Jack recounted the strange encounter and inquired if his father had noticed the man as well. However, his father responded that he hadn't seen anyone else. Nevertheless, this peculiar encounter left a deep impression on Jack and remained vividly etched in his memory. Eleven years back, back in 2012, Jack made a firm decision to pay a visit to his family in Snohomish. It was a strong sense of nostalgia that compelled him to make this journey. An irresistible urge prompted him to embark on a pilgrimage back to Goblin Creek, a place he hadn't set foot in for a considerable 15 years. During his preparations and research, he came across the disheartening news that the Index Gallima Road, the path he once knew well, had succumbed to erosion due to flooding many years prior. However, Jack, resourceful as he was, recalled an alternative route, which he'd remembered from years gone by, the path through Jack Pass. Once he reached that familiar dirt road, Jack parked his vehicle at the very same spot where his father used to park. Stepping out, he set off on foot, journeying through the dense woods toward the creek, filled with a mix of excitement and trepidation. As he ventured deeper into the woods, Jack's eyes caught sight of a young boy, approximately 14 years old, steadily making his way up from the creek. The boy carried a heavy backpack on his shoulders, and what struck Jack with growing amazement and confusion was the uncanny resemblance the boy bore to Jack's younger self. Jack had intended to say something as their paths intersected, but the gravity of the moment weighed so heavily on his tongue that words simply eluded him. The boy continued past Jack, his youthful footsteps fading into the distance. Jack, however, continued his walk, undeterred, until the true weight of the encounter washed over him like a tidal wave. He had just relived a pivotal moment from his teenage years. Both the man he was now and the boy he had just seen were one and the same, separated by a mysterious 15-year gap, driven by a potent mixture of disbelief and urgency, Jack swiftly spun around, hoping to catch up with the younger version of himself. He raced back to his parked truck by the road, but to his bewilderment, he found only emptiness. There was no sign of the boy, even though the paths he could have taken were limited. Jack was certain that not enough time had elapsed for the boy to have vanished completely. It was as though the boy had evaporated into thin air, guided by an insatiable curiosity, Jack hastened his steps back to the creek. Part of him anticipated seeing his father, perhaps fifteen years younger, fishing by the bank, but the creek's shores lay deserted. Jack returned home, grappling with the sheer impossibility of the encounter. It felt too surreal, too fantastical to be shared with friends or family. Instead, he sought answers from others online who might have faced similarly extraordinary experiences. This event transpired six years ago, back in 2017. Daniel Bennett lived in Prattsburg, a small town nestled in New York, USA. On what appeared to be an ordinary evening within Daniel's hometown, he concluded his dinner. Despite the clock showing just past eight in the evening, an overwhelming wave of weariness washed over him. Yielding to this exhaustion, he retired to his bed and sank into a profound slumber that lasted until around seven the following morning, Upon regaining consciousness, Daniel glanced out of his window and was met with an astonishing sight. The buildings and his neighbors' residences seemed to have adopted entirely new hues. Daniel considered whether it might be a trick of drowsiness from his recent awakening. His thoughts drifting to a desire for Cheerios for breakfast. He made his way to the refrigerator, only to discover an absence of milk. What on earth, he exclaimed in frustration. Accepting his predicament, he decided that a quick visit to the Dollar General store was in order. Daniel owned both a motorcycle and a car but opted for the motorcycle, believing the crisp morning air might clear his head. However, as he approached an intersection, he noticed the customary traffic lights had vanished, replaced by blinking lights. 
Finding it peculiar but not dwelling on it too long, he continued his journey. Yet, another peculiarity soon came into focus. Despite the early hour, the sun hung high in the sky, casting shadows as if it were mid-afternoon. As Daniel approached the usual spot where Dollar General should have stood, he abruptly hit the brakes. Instead of the familiar storefront, a sprawling construction site stretched out before him, filling him with bewilderment. Thoughts raced through his mind. Had they demolished the store? What could be the reason behind it, he wondered. At the construction site, a worker noticed Daniel as he parked his motorcycle by the roadside and approached curiously. Daniel, too perplexed and determined to get answers, paid little heed to potential consequences for trespassing. Construction worker, hey, you're not allowed here, Daniel, why are they demolishing Dollar General? The construction worker looked puzzled, construction worker, with confusion, what do you mean? How do you even know this place was Dollar General? We're not tearing it down, we're actually building it. You need to leave immediately, this area is restricted to authorized personnel only, while the conversation may not have unfolded exactly as described. It was something along these lines. The worker's words left Daniel astonished, and the revelation almost made him lose his balance. Without wasting any time, he sprinted away from the site, hopped onto his motorcycle, and raced back towards home. To his shock, an unfamiliar car was parked in his driveway upon his return. He quickly mounted his motorcycle again and sped back toward Dollar General. However, this time, the sky had grown dark. The familiar Dollar General storefront had reappeared, surrounded by a full parking lot. Everything seemed to have reverted to its usual state, Daniel pulled over, gazing at Dollar General, lost in contemplation. Suddenly, the flashing lights of a state trooper's car interrupted his thoughts. The officer approached, stating that Daniel had been speeding, going 65 miles per hour, Daniel attempted to explain his inexplicable experience, pleading with the officer to believe him. The trooper simply responded, sometimes, strange things happen. Malcolm Harris had a medical condition that required him to see a neurologist regularly. By the time he reached the age of 22, he had been visiting the same doctor in the same building for approximately five to six years. On a particular day when he had an appointment scheduled, Malcolm drove to the familiar location, parked his car, and approached the main entrance of the building. To his astonishment, the door was securely locked, and the interior was completely empty. The room, typically furnished with chairs and desks, was now devoid of any such furnishings. Furthermore, there were no signs or markers on the door. Despite this, Malcolm was confident that he had arrived at the correct place. Perplexed, he decided to check the adjacent office, only to find it locked and vacant as well. In fact, all eight offices within the building appeared to be unoccupied. Puzzled and bewildered, Malcolm eventually returned home, speculating that the clinic might have relocated without informing him. However, a few hours later, he received a call from the clinic, inquiring about his well-being. When he mentioned his confusion about their new address, it created a sense of bewilderment on the other end of the line. The clinic staff member clarified that they had not moved and had been located in the same place for many years. Subsequent research confirmed that the clinic had been at that location since the 1980s. During the call, Malcolm shared his unsettling experience, describing the locked and empty rooms. The woman on the other end expressed concern, stating that she hadn't seen him even though he was the only patient scheduled for that hour. Given his account, she suggested that he visit an emergency room, suspecting a potential medical issue. Malcolm refrained from returning to the clinic for nearly two years, haunted by the unsettling incident and fearing a possible rupture in his grasp on reality. However, at the age of 24, he summoned the courage to revisit the office. To his amazement, it was precisely where it had always been. This is the end of today's episode, I hope you enjoyed the stories, please like and share the episode with your friends, also, 
subscribe to the channel for more such content. I will see you soon with another mysterious episode, take care.